A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought Minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, and I'm here with Reverend Bill Marcioni. And today we're going to talk about God always says yes. Yeah. Yeah. That creative power that, that creates everything uh, always says yes. And that's sort of my central thesis of new thought and the, the entire creative process. That's, that's kind of, um, that's kind of difficult. I'm getting there, you know, and I know it's tied to the question and I know you're going to explain all of that later, but just as a, background, you know, the idea in the traditional church is that God says yes, no, or wait. You know, I don't think he says, God says maybe, but definitely there's that third piece, wait. I'll tell you a story. And sometimes it seems like there's a bunch of the nitpickiness going on in the language. And in a lot of ways there is, because we really want to be specific with our language. Don Miguel Ruiz in the four agreements. The first one is be impeccable with your word. And he goes for impeccable rather than just be clear or truthful or honest or open or insightful. He says, be impeccable with your word. You need to say what you mean and mean what you say. And when we do that, the transformation is amazing. It starts out being really subtle, but then it winds up being spectacular. So I like swimming laps. And every once in a while, I'm in the lap pool. There's somebody in there. And I need to share the lap with them. And I would ask, do you mind if we share the lap? Share, share the lap lane. And they'd say, no, come on in. And then I realized that I'm asking for a no. And I changed the question. So instead of, do you mind? I said, is it okay for me to share the lane with you? And the answer was yes. And we wound up doing exactly the same thing, but I was being very much more clear in the answer that I wanted. Now, when I understand that there's an infinite power that's going to answer yes, the lap lane thing is a reminder that the way we're asking the question makes the difference. And the infinite, the universe, that divine creative power that creates everything is responding to our word. And all the creation stories are saying the same thing. In the beginning was darkness and void and God and God said, let there be light. And the law responded, yes, and there's light. The beginning was the word and the word was God, the word was with God. And the word is going to be whatever we put in there and it's going to get an affirmative response. It's going to get a yes because it's a principle, because it's a law, because it's always the same thing. And if I say something along the lines of, I don't want to be lonely or I don't want to be broke. The conversation is about me being broke. And the answer is going to be, Yes. And I get to experience being broke or being lonely or whatever it happens to be. So when I'm changing my thinking, what I need to do is get myself aligned with what I want the universe to be saying yes to. It is really easy for us to look at our circumstances and understand what they are. And when we focus on our circumstances, we invite more of it. I see that, but it takes, it takes practice. It absolutely takes practice. It is really easy when the place that we live, for example, is pretty nice to clean things up and and spruce it up and make it be really nice. And there are times when it's such a disaster that we think it's going to take an awful lot of work and the energy that it takes to get started and to see that we can take our living room or our neighborhood or our section of the city and transform it by taking some of the clutter, by taking some of the debris and the junk and the garbage away and allowing what was there before to come through. Yeah, it's a lot of work. And it starts with the vision of at the end of the work, it's going to look like this and it's going to feel like this and it's going to be like this. And then we get busy 
allowing that creative power working through us because there's you know, trash to pick up, and, you know, mind to pick up. But it's that vision that the response to the vision is yes. So it's important to know exactly what you want before you ask the question. Yeah, and, and there are some loopholes. We don't necessarily have to know exactly what we want. We, we might know how we want to feel. So there's this conflict that's going on with me and my brother-in-law, for example. And I might have an idea of how I want the conflict to be resolved, but that's really none of my business. What I want to be clear of is I want to be in a space of open, loving support and connection and communication with this person. And so that's the yes that I'm going for. And it's none of my business how that happens. Maybe he's going to change his mind. Maybe I'm going to have a change of heart. Maybe it'll turn out that we were both saying the same thing, but we were so busy yelling that we didn't notice we were yelling the same thing. There are lots of different ways that it can work. But what I want to do in that case is to be focused on the outcome, which is to feel that connection and that harmony and to be to transform whatever the challenge has been. Other circumstances, we can just, the prayer can be for guidance. I don't know what to do. I don't know what, what my next thing is going to be. So the prayer is, uh, I'm guided. I'm guided into exactly what the next steps are. And then I take them. Because we get to repeat this process. We get to, we, we get to make a little bit of progress and pray again. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't quite work the first time. Is that what you're saying? Uh, because we're triangulating in on our goal. If I know how I want to feel, but I don't know what to do in the circumstance, then I set the intention that this is how I want to feel. And I pray for the guidance and I take a step. And then from that new perspective, I can say I'm headed in the right direction, or this was, this is better than it was, but now it's over that way. So I want to change course a little bit and take another step. And I can kind of zigzag back and forth as I zero in on exactly what it is that I'm creating and allow my, the other person to meet me there. This is amazing. You know, it's like a light went off. I love this stuff, especially when you do it like that. You, you said that there are loopholes. So I'm listening for the loopholes because that's where we get tripped up. Mm -hmm. So you use the term feeling. And I think that that is very important place to start and explaining. Because in, in some, I guess I'll say circumstances or some thoughts, feelings are not the thing you go for. It's because you don't trust your feelings. You know, we are in the traditional church, particularly, you don't trust your feelings. You just go by what the word says. Mm -hmm. But there's a huge gap there because I understand it because I'm, I'm listening to you, you know, like you're the teacher, right? You're, you've been teaching me this all along. But to make that leap and say, it's okay that I, what I am going after is a feeling and that my feelings are important and that my feelings actually guide me. That's a little bit of something in there too, you know, because you have to get used to the fact that that's okay. Yeah. And, and that's crucial. That's crucial because the things that we really want are peace of mind and joy and happiness and harmony and uh, opportunity. And most of those, I mean, opportunity is the ability to see some new possibility and take a step toward it. The rest of those are feelings. You know, I, sometimes we, we're, we're, we're talking about prosperity and I'll tell the group, raise your hand if you want to be rich and all the hands go up and I say, raise your hand if you want to be happy. And again, all the hands go up. And then the question is, would you, would you want to be rich or happy? People think about it for a second and everybody wants to be happy. Now, rich is nice, but if I got to be unhappy in order to be rich, then it's not worth the price of admission. So let's talk about that feeling. Let's talk about being happy. Let's talk about creating an experience of our life where we are feeling that contentment, that happiness, that satisfaction, that uh, peace of mind, that joy, that connection, and let the rest be added to that. 
That's important because as you were talking, I was thinking about how maybe to say the culture is too broad, but we don't value feelings. Feelings are nice if they're there, but I don't think generally we value feelings that much. Um, if a person's feelings are hurt, yeah, you know, like get over it. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is how it goes. Or, um, in, well, we're capitalists. At least we live in a capitalistic society. Yep. And so it's the bottom line is what matters for it most and not how you feel about it. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. But this changes everything because it, it directs, actually it does direct the bottom line as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And people, you know, say, oh, well, it's business. So I had to do that. It's a business as though we can dispense with everything else and just go for the competition and the bottom line. And that's not true because if that were true, then there would be much more rampant theft and it would be much more obvious than it is. There would be lots of, and the word cutthroat competition, I mean, that actually means killing people. There would be more of that. And we, we frown upon that mostly as well. There are some there are some businesses where they do that. We tend to talk about organized crime as though it's not the pinnacle of our civilization and that's not what we want to be doing. If that's all it's about, though, then that's got to be okay. And it's not. There's some controlling or uh, mitigating factor there. And it's their feeling. The CEO doesn't want to go home at the end of the day and say, I made a bunch of money and a bunch of folks had to die. Oh, well, sucks to be them. Back in, uh, this is a quick short story, back in the 80s, in my corporate life, uh, one of the jobs that I had was selling software maintenance contracts, which is crazy because you're selling nothing, you know, <laughs> you're selling a promise, but that's, that's what we were doing. And there was a, I was given the task, my portfolio was full of people who would not renew. Mm-hmm. There was a guy and it was a huge contract and he was thoroughly pissed and he was not going to renew. And they had sent all the big guns after him. And they said, listen, if you renew this, they gave me a little bonus thing, you know, carrot. I said, mm -hmm. done. So on my way to see him, I stopped at Wawa and got a bunch of flowers. And when I went in, he looked up, he said, they sent you. I said, yeah, like I had no idea why they sent me. Like, I said, I'm so scared of you because you've chewed up everybody and spit them out and they're sending me. So listen, here's some flowers to make your day and let's just call it done because I don't want you chewing me up. And I turned around and walked to walk away and he said, wait, where are you going? <laughs> 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 the quick story, I mean, the bottom line story is he signed the contract right there that, you know, within the first 20 minutes. And he said, I like you because you make me feel good. You make mm -hmm. me feel like a person. Yep. And I had no idea. All I know is I was scared and these flowers might help me. <laughs> and they worked. So feelings, a person's feelings are important but I don't know that we know how important they are. Whenever we're doing a business transaction or we're engaged in some process, it's with other people. Now there are organizations and protocols and standards that are all get involved in the middle of that. But at the end of the day, here we are as human beings, whether it's in our home life or our work life or our social life or our sports teams or whatever it is, We've got these series of minutes every day, 1,440 of them. We're filling them up with something. And to think that, oh, I'm going to go to the office and now my feelings aren't going to be important, or I'm going to be able to completely disconnect myself from the things that uplift and enrich me is preposterous. We are whole, complete people doing lots of different things, using up those 1,440 minutes in different ways every day, hopefully bringing some good into our lives and to the lives of the people who are around us. You were telling a story about, uh, you know, renewing the contract. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, another New Thought minister, his day job before he went fully into ministry was working for a chemical company. And he was the guy on the sales team 
they did the same thing with him. They assigned him to all of the worst accounts. They assigned him to the, the, the ones that are the most belligerent and recalcitrant and the feisty fighting ones. And he would go in and they would be happy customers. And it was because he was bringing these same techniques to his sales work and for the chemical company. Now, chemicals, good or bad, I don't know, you decide. Driving around from hither to yon, burning up a lot of gasoline for a chemical company, good or bad, you decide. Doesn't make any difference. What he was doing was being present for the people who were the customers yes. so that they could go beyond whatever their personality issues were and have an opportunity co to connect at a deeper level and find the good. He was getting to yes. What's it going to take to be at yes in this situation? There are challenges, there are difficulties. The guy you're talking about, there's challenges and difficulties. And all you saw was yes. Let's, let's dispense with all of the no's. Everybody else has got a no out of you. So we know that you can do it. So let's not go there. Let's get to yes. That's actually what I was thinking. I didn't know that's how it works. So now here, all these years later, I'm seeing that that's how it works. Yeah. So then when we, God always says yes to however or whatever we say, it could be negative, it could be incorrect to use the, you know, for lack of a better term, incorrect, we're getting a yes to whatever we have put forward. Correct. That, okay. that, is, that is my notion. And so we've got to then, be really careful about the language, sometimes annoyingly so. It's really entertaining to, to, to watch as a new thought congregation sings the traditional hymn and changes the words. Yeah. I'll leave that discussion for another time. We'll, yeah, we'll, but it's we'll bring it's, in somebody to sing Amazing Grace because I will not sing that I'm a wretch. No, and, because the universe will say yes. And there are a few like that. Oh yeah, there there are a bunch like that because the whole notion of duality is God up there better than us with the avenue that that we have to pray to or through in order to get the goodies which may or may not be coming. There's this sense that we have to have humility. We need to bow before God and allow God to, to, to make the decisions. And in fact, everything that we are is created by God. We are powerful beings. We get to claim our power. We are not more powerful than anybody else, but we are powerful. We are, we are co-creative agents using this creative power that creates everything. And the answer is going to be yes. So if we're not owning the yes, then what are we looking for? I almost think that that's a great place to start, especially if you are making the transition from traditional to new thought. And I almost think at times that's not a fair statement to say to make because new thought to me just is like um, much more clear and detailed of what tra traditional thinking is like the cliff notes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're talking about the pivot. Yeah. Well, let's take a quick break and then come back and talk about the pivot. You can put practical prayer to work in your life, and Reverend Bill Marcioni can help. He is offering an online class that teaches you to create your own practical prayer in five weekly one-hour sessions. The final hour brings your practical prayer together, anchored in live original music by a notable New Thought musician. Practical prayer is based on the most effective prayers found in religions and spiritual practices all over the world. Use it to deepen ever more fully into the truth of your spiritual nature. It's the core of a transformational spiritual practice that's simple, even if it's not always easy. Reverend Bill is also available for private spiritual counseling prayer sessions. Together, you'll lean into the challenges you've experienced in life and explore the transformation that's possible through practical prayer. You'll uncover old, hidden beliefs and uproot them to make way for the life of your dreams. Everything you need to know is on the website at b-v-light.com. That's b-v-light.com. Welcome back 
to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, and here with Reverend Bill Marcioni. We're going to talk about the pivot. And the pivot is where we turn from whatever the circumstance has been up until now, and we turn towards the circumstance that we want to have instead. The visual metaphor for that is if I'm looking at the darkness, if I'm looking and there's all sorts of shadows in front of me, the shadows are actually caused by something blocking the light. So as often as not, especially if it's me outside in the daylight, the light's behind me. The light is over my shoulder and I'm in the way. So it's me looking into the shadowy part. If I want to see the light in that circumstance, what I need to do is turn around and know that my good is coming in a different direction. If I'm sitting there looking into the shadows and hoping I'm going to see the light, then I'm going to, I get to spend as much time as I want there. What I'm doing is I'm saying, I'm seeing shadows and I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And the universe is saying yes and continues to give me shadows. And I need to turn around towards the light. And it's not like there's some kind of decision that as I'm turning around, God is deciding whether or not I get to see the light. I am turning towards the light and allowing because the answer is yes. The light is shining. It's there. It's available. That's an excellent analogy. I like that. Turning around so that you're facing the light. And yeah, yeah and, and that there's a lot that goes with that feeling of of seeing light, light or facing light because the other way you're feeling frustration because there's shadows and you can't figure out how there's something there and you can't really see it. So there's a lot of frustration and that very well describes what it is to be in another camp sometime when you're trying, you know that there's something more, something different. Not You're not saying something better, but something different. I need to know. Yeah. Be because it's more to it than this. And it comes down to a lot of times deservability and the word should. I should be more successful. I should have a relationship. I should, whatever it happens to be. And when we say I should be more successful, what we're actually doing is saying, I'm not successful. I'm not successful and I'm going to judge myself and beat myself up for not having been as successful as I want to be. And the belief behind that is that I don't deserve the success. Should, should is a wonderful indicator word because when we're, when we're, and I'll use the term, when we're shooting on ourselves, <laughs> we are facing into the shadow. Oh yeah. Because you have, you can come up with a lot of reasons why you have, quote, failed, or it's not working out anywhere from, I'm not a good person. I did this. Consequently, this is happening to me. I'm getting what I deserve because I don't deserve better. And the beat goes on. Yep. But then when you turn it around and you say, well, listen, because I always say, listen, I'm human just like anybody else. And I've done a lot of crap but so is everybody else. So we're pretty much on the same play, level playing field here. So I can't, I'm not getting the consequences of what I have done necessarily. I'm not unworthy because, I mean, then God could just go off into some other place because none of us are worthy, you know, if you look at it like that. So, oh, yeah. It's so, either, everyone's yeah. worthy, everything is worthy, or nothing is. It's, yes, there's, yes. There's not, there's not two classes in this particular, uh, you know, there's not first class and coach. Yeah, so that, that's a, a good place to start. You know, I think that's the place to start. So now about rephrasing things from that mindset is very different. Yeah. And then it becomes about choice. I can look at somebody else's life and I can be jealous of all the good things that they have, uh, that they're in charge of a big company or that they have, they have a huge yacht or a fabulous mansion or whatever it happens to be. And I can just feel less than because of all the things that, that I don't have compared to them. Or I can look at the gifts that I have and, and be grateful for them anyway. And my wife and I used to drive around and look at these huge mansions with a for sale sign. And the first thing that we would say is, can you imagine how much it'd take to heat that place? 
because <laughs> yeah it's got wonderful grounds and it looks like it's got a swimming pool and a tennis court behind it and lots and lots of rooms and there's a special room that just has a piano in it and that'd be kind of fun but do i need that much space and do i want to heat that much space or take care of that much space because with the the opportunity comes the responsibility and the same thing for being in charge of uh, a big company then you have all those people reporting to you and there's all the responsibilities of regulations and how to run the business and the bottom line and all the rest of it. And that can be uplifting and that can be thrilling and that can be uh, really fulfilling for somebody. But just to suppose that uh, all I want are the perks and I don't want the responsibility of having to do all that stuff, it, that short changes us. We can, the universe is going to say yes. But when the universe says yes to me being the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, that's a whole lifestyle. That's a whole lifestyle and a whole level of responsibility and things that I get to do that I haven't had to do in a while, like deal with a feisty board of directors and shareholder meetings. It's like, please, I'm so grateful I don't have to do that. So if we take time to think about that, you know, and uh, the responsibility and all of the, the dynamics that go along with it we actually rephrase the prayer. Yeah. Yeah. So if I want to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, that's perfectly okay, and I probably can, even though there are only 500 jobs in the world doing that. Uh, I really have to want it, though, and I have to be willing to put all of my attention and energy and focus into achieving that, and it might not happen immediately. I'll probably have to do some other things along the way which will help me, first of all, prove to myself and the universe that I really want it and prove to the other individuals who are involved in this process that I'm a good candidate and I'm a good fit for the position. If, on the other hand, what I really want is a comfortable lifestyle with, uh, with enough money that I don't have to think about it and an opportunity to share my gifts and skills and lead a group, that's a feeling. How do I want to feel? as a result of the work that I'm doing. And it, when we set up the tone and texture of that feeling, of that experience that we're having, it gives the universe a lot more possibilities. Do I need to be the CEO of that particular company? Or can I be the executive director of a nonprofit that pays really well, or maybe doesn't pay really well, but, but all of the perks are going to make sure that you know, all my meals are paid for and I have a place to live and I've got enough money to, to do what I want to do and transportation is included, et cetera. I mean, there's so many possibilities. When I open myself up to the possibilities by focusing on what it is that I'm truly desiring to experience, it opens up the possibility for a lot of different yeses and things that I never would have thought of myself. Actually, it opens up the possibility for peace of mind, which is something that we we all really want. Uh, satisfaction and peace of mind and contentment. Yeah, do you want to be happy? Yeah, because without considering the dynamics of that which you want, then you just, the want is just I like the word cliff notes. <laughs> it's, it's just like, you know, you, and maybe that's why we have to keep editing what we want. You know, we got this and I'm not happy and you got to start over and start over. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing because you learn as you go. But and maybe it's not editing. Maybe it's refining. Yeah. Sometimes it's just flat out changing. You know, because if you've been asking for the, the big, uh, you know, on television where they show you affirmations and all those videos and they show these, this opulent lifestyle. And so that's what you want. But I remember the first time I looked at one of those videos, I thought, what kind of work do they do? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I totally didn't understand the whole concept of it. But you're right. You know, when you look at the details of what is required, the responsibility, say, like, well, wait a minute. You know, I just want to be comfortable. I just want to, this is what will make me happy. I, yep. you know, I love the water and the ocean. I go as often as I can. And uh, I went to lunch and the, my friend invited me to her home. She just moved on the bay. And it was incredible because it was almost like the bay. I could stand on her deck and throw a stone right into the bay. 
Mm. And I saw myself there, right? I saw it and I thought, this is it. This is great. And I, I did a, you know, a match to where I am to that. And I said, this, this will, this will work. This will work. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of out there, you know, I may be sending you my new address. <laughs> <laughs> From the Bay. Yeah. And at the same time, if you get a fabulous offer, to do something that would be tremendously fulfilling and it's in Omaha, then you get to make a choice. You know, I even thought about that. I thought about what would I do? Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, you get to make a choice because those opportunities come along all the time. Is this new experience, this, this uplifting opportunity enough to make me give up the Bay? Maybe, maybe not. Or is that knowing that I could do this thing, that would be wonderful reminding me just exactly how wonderful the water is. And I'm not going to give it up even for that other really cool thing because we get to do, we're following our path and our path can lead anywhere, but it doesn't lead everywhere. Every step along our path is another step. And that brings us to a new, a new place. And so our feelings have a lot to do with that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. We can, it's, it's, it's a, (laughs) it's a dance or a death march and you know we can step the, along our path in whatever feeling we want i prefer to dance well just so you know that i pay really good attention to my teacher as i was driving home i'm talking to spirit i said hold up don't move on this yet don't move on this yet because i got to make sure that I feel really good about that. And I, I thought of every, you know, aspect of what I was looking for. And it was one little thing, just one little thing. And I said, ah, not the perfect place. Don't move on it. Hmm. Because that one little thing would make that not right. As beautiful as it, as it is and how wonderful it felt, that one little thing would make it perfect and feel perfect and it wasn't there. So it's really important to honor that. Yeah. We can fool ourselves. We can trick ourselves into, (laughs) into thinking that it's going to be good. There have been more than one occasion where I have taken a job and there were some really good things about the job, but there's some really challenging things about the job. And I just overlooked the challenging things I needed the job and I wanted the job and I wanted this. It sucked. It was awful. And listening to that guidance and saying, the answer is always yes, but my yes is going to be for something else. My yes is to taking care of myself and following my instincts instead of just saying, oh, there's a job. I need to say yes. Mm -hmm. We're looking for the fit. And I I like the word that you used, honor that, um, honor yourself and it's understanding how important being you is because being you or being me, I take me everywhere I go. And if Mm -hmm. I, if there's something there that is missing or dishonoring, or I've looked over it, the satisfaction of that absence is going to go no matter how beautiful the bay is and how, you know, beautiful the surroundings would be not honoring every part of what's important would have made that, uh, I'd be at it again. You know, I'd be looking for something else again. Yeah. And what's the opposite of that honoring yourself and your intuition is should. Cause the world is perfectly willing to tell us what we should do. And sometimes it's great. And sometimes it's not. And when we honor ourselves, we are able to navigate the shoulds and understand when we're doing something for an external pressure or because somebody else has decided, or because that's standard operating procedure for people who are like me, whatever that means. And to honor the guidance that we've got. And sometimes, sometimes the guidance takes a while. Sometimes it takes a while for us to, first of all, to be exposed to the possibility and also to work through our disbelief 
or our reluctance to embrace new possibilities. Sometimes it takes a while for the ship to turn around and that's okay. That's, you know, that's maybe that's what you meant when, when you're talking about God says later or not now, if I'm not ready for, for the yes, then it's not going to show up. I just don't like the, I don't like discomfort and disappointment and pain. Nobody does, but I mean, I'm really driven (laughs) by not wanting it. I can wait. I can wait. If I know I'm going to feel some level of disappointment, forget it, no matter how good it looks. And where I was standing, you know, that place was just about every single thing I could have met that I had imagined Hmm. that would make me me one, you know, make me feel great. Perfect. It's just, but it was that one. And, you know, I don't want to be mysterious about it, but I need an extra bedroom and I have three and I need four. Okay. And this only had three. And I thought, you know, grandchildren, my mother, this is not going to work no matter how wonderful it is. I will be miserable. You know, if, to you know if that if I were in that situation, right? Yeah, mostly fabulous is occasionally constricted, and the constriction isn't worth it. It's not. It's not. And I wonder if that's just uh, this is probably another subject. It's life experience. Once you have felt enough disappointment from getting what you want or what you thought you wanted, <laughs> you hold out and say, "Wait a minute, <laughs> okay, like I know." Personally, I'm speaking personally, I know that if I want something and I put it out there, it's coming. Yeah. I know it. And but it's also, a matter of timing. Well, you know, and I don't I don't know about time. You know, that's that's God's business. All right. I know is be careful with this because if it shows up right now, the way you're asking, it's worth a second or third thought. You yep. know? Like me as and my great Danes. Yeah. And as, 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 as you're, you're talking, I'm thinking about, you know, wouldn't it be great if somebody offered you a free tank of gas? Be nice. Here, I'm give you a free tank of gas, but you don't have your car with you. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds great, but it's going to be a mess. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But, you know, there, is it a split second where you say, wait a minute, don't take that because it's going to be a mess. Or right. as you say, you fool yourself and say, I'm going to make this work. Right. Or you get that. Let, let me try and find a finagle yeah. to, to make this work. And what we're doing when we're going through that process is we're looking for the yes. I want to be able to say yes to this gift, but pouring 20 gallons of gas on me is not going to be a good solution. So let me... <laughs> Let me redefine the the request so that when we get the yes, it's going to be something uplifting and fulfilling. Absolutely. Say that again, though. Redefining the request. Redefining the request. Oh, the response this... is going to be yes. Let's make sure we're asking the right question. We I the right write the thing down. Okay. I'm telling you, my teacher is specific. specific. <laughs> I write it down and then I rewrite it and reword it before it goes out there. Like spirit can't read, right? But I talk to spirit. That's just yeah. me, right? I said, hold on, wait till I'm finished. Don't be looking. Wait till I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to keep refining it. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back and do a prayer for clarity and guidance in next perfect steps. Perfect. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b the light Dot com. That's b the light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. 
podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, and I'm here with Reverend Bill Marcioni, and we're going to pray. I'm going to do a prayer, and this is going to be for clarity and guidance and next perfect steps, which is the way that we can let go of what it is that we think we know and allow spirit to inform us as to what's best for us to do with the guidance for the next steps. And I include in this prayer that we take the steps because knowing that I want to do something is different than actually doing it. You know, if I get the guidance to, for my next step and then I sit there on my purple pillow without actually taking any action, that's not going to change anything. This is a partnership between me and the infinite. So I let the infinite say, this is what's next to do. And then I take, I do my part and then the infinite will conspire with all the rest of the circumstances to bring me either to wonderful success and completion or to the next step, in which case there's something else for me to do. And it winds up being a dance of success. So we'll do the prayer about that. So uh, the, the usual advice for anybody who's listening to this, uh, if you're operating heavy machinery or driving a car, please do not close your eyes. Everybody else, turn away from the world outside so that we can become aware of that infinite power and presence that is everything, that is everyone, that is everywhere. Because there is only God. There is only this one infinite creative power, this one divine source, this one energy, this one substance, this one essence that shares itself as all of its creation. Everything is God's divine presence expressed in a unique and particular way. That everything includes me, it includes each one who is within the sound of my voice. Each of us individually, all of us together are that divine essence that is God itself. Not the entirety of God, but our unique individualization of it. But because we have access to that infinite creative power, because it is the truth of what we are, all of that creative possibility is available to each of us and to all of us. The infinite divine intelligence that has the knowingness to create this entire manifest universe is available to guide us in this next new experience that we are embarking upon. That infinite love that shares itself through all of creation is ready to uplift us and support us in creating this next new experience. So I know that each one quiets down to the greatest degree possible for us to allow that infinite intelligence, that still small voice to reveal to us exactly what is next for us to guide us into our next perfect steps to allow that next new experience to unfold in exquisite perfection. The guidance is at hand, the steps are revealed, and each one of us takes those steps, bringing us closer and closer and closer to that life of our dreams. There's no power that stands in the way of this. There is not a force that opposes that infinite creative power. It is all good. As we go through this process, it is simply a matter of taking the steps, refining the 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 question and allowing the guidance to zero us in on that desired experience. Love is unfolding in this way for each of us individually, for all of us together. The good is at hand and I'm so grateful for it. I'm grateful for the guidance. I'm grateful for the participation. I'm grateful for the willingness and I'm grateful for the results that are even now on the way. And with a feeling of thanks for all of this good, I speak this word of intention and I release it into that creative law that has said yes since the very beginning of time. I set the intention for this good unfolding for each of us. And the law says yes. And so I let it be. And so it is. Amen. So it is. That was great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to some stories. I experienced a new challenge. But this is not a new one since I met my teacher. Oh, you okay. mean during that prayer? Yeah, during the prayer, often with my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got to write this down. <laughs> so I have to back out of the prayer thing and make a note and then jump back in. Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-Light.com.
www.realprayer.com where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org.